thanks so much for coming, and thanks so much for uh, the Texas State Museum for having me here today. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the work I did at NASA over the summer. Uh, I recently got it about a year ago. This, I guess, yeah, a little, a little over a year ago, I got into computer science. My background is in um, biochemistry and biomedical engineering. I used to do research in in a lab with micropipettes, and you know, I, n I never really thought about uh, computer science. Um, but uh, you know, as a scientist, you're always pushed to hyper-specialize. You know, you pick, need to pick one little thing and focus on that for the rest of your career. And I, I, I think that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that um, you know there's still room for some of us who like to switch switch things up every once in a while. You know, I went into um, computer science last year and um, and I found it to be a lot of fun. So if you're one of those people that, that doesn't want to hyper specialize, um, hopefully you know you, you you can you can still make contributions, which is what I found um, this summer. Even if you have kind of a topical knowledge of a lot of different areas. So what did we work on? Well, I was in the human research program at uh, Glenn Research Center. NASA has a bunch of different centers. It's not just the one at Johnson. Uh, so Glenn Research Center is a huge compound in Cle right near Cleveland, Ohio. And that's where actually most of NASA's research takes place. So I was in the human research program there. And the human research program is charged with keeping astronauts healthy during space flight. So there's a lot of uh, really serious issues that astronauts can encounter when they're in microgra microgravity. We've got some short-term side effects, so things like um, nausea, uh, dizziness. You know, it's space sickness. It's like seasickness, uh, but in space. It's just as bad. If you've ever been seasick, seasick, you know that it can be really terrible and really compromise your ability to work. Uh, so flight surgeons, there's a team of flight surgeons that try to make sure that these astronauts stay as healthy as possible because they're up there and they're on a really tight schedule, and the mission will not um, will not get done uh, if they're you know, out, of, out of commission for half a day or even a full day. So as far as short-term problems, um, there are you know, pharmaceuticals and, and different things that, that the astronauts need to pack with them to take the International Space Station. And then there are some long, longer-term issues, um, anxiety and depression, uh, osteoporosis, muscle atrophy. These happen on longer stints at the International Space Station. Uh, we do still have an astronauts on the International Space Station. Uh, we, you know, we, every once in a while, a, a few more will go up uh, with the help of the Russians. So this is what the, the human research program is charged with, is making sure that astronauts are healthy. And um, one of the, the tools that this research program uses um, is the integrated medical model. So this is a software-based medical modeling tool. Um, and it helps flight surgeons make decisions as far as who to send up to space, right? Because they have a bunch of different astronaut candidates. They need to, they need to decide who are they going to select for a given mission. Um, and, and what should they bring with them to make sure that, that, they, that they stay healthy up there? So this model um, basically predicts a bunch of different types of health outcomes. So what it does is it simulates a mission over and over again. And um, different things are put into this model, um, like the mission duration, What's the vehicle environment like? Uh, how many crew are up there? Different crew act attributes. It, you know, something as simple as does this crew member have a crown? Right? That can make or break a mission. Uh, if that if something goes wrong and that crew member is in a lot of pain and they have to take painkillers, um, you know, that that can compromise a mission. So all of those things go into the model, and the software does its thing, and out comes a bunch of different simulations of that mission. And we call one of those simulations a trial. And all of the possible medical events are listed for that simulation or that trial. Um, and all of the different medical resources that are used are listed for that trial. So what am I saying? What kind of medical resources? Well, we're talking about something as simple as a Tylenol, um, a bunch of different phar pharmaceuticals, a bunch of different non-consumables like syringes, injectors, things like that. Some other things that come out of this model are um, the probability of evacuation and the loss of crew life for a given mission scenario, and something called the Crew Health Index, or CHI. So this is a number between one, uh, 0 and 100. So 100 is if the crew is 100% healthy the entire time, there's absolutely no sickness, you know, everything's great. And 0 is if you know, everybody dies on like a second after takeoff. right? So we want to avoid the 0 situation. We want the 100 situation as far as Crew Health Index is concerned. 
So what can this model help with? Well, it can help with designing an optimal medical kit. Right? We can't take all of the possible resources that these astronauts, you know, they can't take everything they're going to need with them. That's just too much mass. That's way too much volume. Um, they have a, a, you know, a relatively small little medical kit that, that they can take. So the objective is to find the very best combination of resources to put in that medical kit. Right, so that was the goal, one of my goals this summer was to um, design an algorithm that produces an optimal medical kit uh, that maximizes crew health. Right, so we measure crew health by that, CA, that crew health index, that 0 to 100 number. So we want to get that number as high as possible for some mission scenario. Right. So this is actually kind of a hard problem. Um, there's a really large solution space, and so how do we define the solution space for this problem? We can take, uh, we can devise something called a maximum medical kit. So let's say we run 100,000 different simulations on that integrated medical model, right? We, we simulate a, a mission 100,000 different times, and we see what kind of things pop up, right? So for all those 100,000 simulations, um, a maximum medical kit would be the kit of medical resources such that if we were to pluck one of those simulations out, we would be sure to be able to treat every medical event in that simulation from our medical kit. Right, so that would be the maximum medical kit. And this is generally about 3,000 items. So it's really big. There's no way we can take this maximum medical kit with us. Uh, it's just too heavy. Um, so we know that the optimal medical kit has to be some subset of this medical kit. We also know that that's, a, that's still a huge solution space, right? Around two to the 3,000. So there's no possible way we can go through every single possible medical kit and test to see, is this the best one? Or, or is this the best one? It's just, it's impossible. So we have about 3,000 items. Each one of those items, like I said, items are like a Tylenol, um, an, uh, I don't know, a lorazepam, a, a syringe, a pair of nitrile gloves. Those are our items. Each item has a volume. It has a mass. And um, it also has some sort of utility or value to the astronauts. And these items have different utilities, right? So an antibiotic is going to be way more important than gloves, right? So, so these items have different values. So how do we choose uh, which ones to pack? So computer scientists in the room, what does this problem look like? Yeah, the knapsack problem, exactly. So this is a really classic problem in computer science. So this problem is the 0-1 knapsack problem. Uh, kind of a generic explanation of the knapsack problem is this. If we have this, this knapsack, we have some mass constraint. We can't put more than 9 kilograms in that knapsack. And we have a bunch of different items there. So we have those boxes, those are our items. And they each have a mass and they have a, a value. And we want to fill up our knapsack so that we maximize the value of the, uh, the, the total value of the items in the knapsack, but uh, we want to make sure we don't go over that nine kilograms. Okay? So for a small problem like this, where there's only five items, this is a pretty easy problem. But if we have 3,000 items, this is a really hard problem. In fact, this problem is NP-hard. Okay? So NP-hard means that based on the model of computation that, that we have right now, we, we can't solve this problem. Um, we can't brute force, brute force this problem. Uh, but there are some approaches. So there's dynamic programming. There's a branch and bound approach. There's greedy algorithms. There's genetic algorithms. Um, but dynamic programming is probably the easiest one to implement. So this takes advantage of kind of a special characteristic of this type of problem. So it takes advantage of something called the optimal substructure of our problem. So we have this nine kilogram knapsack and we have all of our different items there. And we need to figure out what's, what's the combination of items that we can put in our knapsack that maximizes the value in the knapsack. And the optimal solution is this, right? The, the maximum value we can get in that knapsack is $15 and we haven't exceeded the mass constraint. So that's good, so this is our optimal solution. So what optimal substructure means is this. If we take one of our items out of the knapsack and we shrink our knapsack down to accommodate the remaining items, right? For a, for a three kilogram knapsack, this is still the optimal solution. Right? And if we do this again, if we take another item out of the knapsack and shrink the, 
the knapsack down to accommodate only our remaining items, right? This is still the optimal solution for our smaller knapsack. So what optimal substructure means is that an optimal solution can be constructed efficiently from optimal solutions of, of subproblems. So we can build up an optimal knapsack from smaller problems. And this is a really good thing for us because it means that we can solve this problem a lot faster. So this is what we, what, this is what we did. We ran a bunch of different trials in IMM, um, the integrated medical model, to figure out for, for a given mission scenario. So let's say we, we picked a 12-day mission with two crew to the ISS to service, I don't know, the robotic arm or something. And that's our, that's our mission. Um, we run 100,000 or some really large number of trials, of simulations of that mission to see what kind of health problems we get. And we look at all the health problems that occur during those 100,000 missions and we generate a maximum medical kit. All right, so now we have our maximum medical kit, which for a two crew 12-day mission, that's about 3,000 items. We can't take all those items. We have some smaller subset of those items that we can actually take. And so um, we assign values to each of those items because right, antibiotics might be more important than, than gloves, for example. And then we can populate our knapsack uh, with those different items, with those different treatments using dynamic programming. So this is a really classic solution in computer science, but it hadn't been implemented yet by NASA um, because they didn't have a computer scientist on their team. So uh, for those of you who aren't interested in hyper-specializing, uh, yeah, there is a place for you, right? You, there, um, you can join a team, and if you have a topical knowledge of, of different areas, maybe you know, maybe something that's really cl a really classic solution in one area can really help somebody in another area. And all they need is someone to kind of bridge that gap between disciplines. So this, this problem was implemented in MATLAB. Um, it can be solved within a reasonable amount of time. So what that O parentheses MVN means. So let's think about what that means. So the M stands for the total mass of our knapsack. Uh, the V would stand for the total volume of our knapsack. And N is the number of items we want to put in our knapsack. So if we multiply those three numbers together, right, our runtime is bounded by that product. Right? So, so it's a reasonable, it's a reasonable runtime. You know, we can we can do that. Um, so some of the optimization priorities, we want to try to minimize the number of evacuations. We want to maximize that crew health index. And um, NASA had an, had an algorithm to uh, optimize the items put into a med kit. Um, but this algorithm that I just described is way faster. It's about 160% speed up over the previous implementation. But let's see if it actually worked. So here's a four crew, 14 day mission. Uh, we've got for the top graph, we've got crew health index on the horizontal axis and number of trials on the vertical axis. So that green distribution to the far right, that's if we were able to bring our maximum medical kit up to space with us. So that's if every single treatment, uh, every single medical event was treated. So we see that the distribution of crew health indices over all of those trials, over all of those simulations, it's pretty high. Right? We're approaching 100. Um, that blue distribution that's a little bit wider, that's if we weren't able to treat any um, medical issues. So that we see that the crew health, you know, on that, on that, uh, during those missions wasn't so good. The blue, the, the turquoise blue that's a little bit higher than the dark blue, that was NASA's previous implementation of this algorithm that generates these medical kits for missions. And the red was the algorithm that I just described. So we see a significant improvement over the previous algorithm. And the previous algorithm they were using was kind of a heuristic search algorithm. Um, and we also get an improvement with number of evacuations. So the dark blue is um, the number of evacuations for the untreated scenario. The green is the number of evacuations for the treated scenario where everything is treated. And then we get a small improvement with the dynamic programming algorithm, uh, which is in red, versus NASA's current implementation, which is in turquoise. Right. So uh, something that you know, we learn in you know, kind of our first introduction to algorithms course can be really helpful, uh, especially when you know, uh, you know, you're on a team where nobody else is in your discipline. So um, yeah, it was a lot of fun this summer. I won't go into through all the results, but over uh, other missions, everything, you know, things were the same.
there are students in the room that are interning at NASA. So this is the front of Glenn Research Center in Cleveland. Uh, for those of you who are interested in interning at NASA, you can go to intern.nasa.gov for short-term opportunities. That's like one spring or one summer or one fall uh, semester. Or if you're interested in a longer year opportunity, so like a co-op, then you would go to usajobs.gov and search NASA Pathways. Um, so everyone I met at NASA was really awesome. I actually worked with Dr. Jerry Myers. He was, uh, and Dr. DeGron Devon Griffin. They were both our, our project managers uh, for the IMM project. And everyone was really awesome. So if you're, you know, kind of on, if you're thinking about interning at NASA, I would really recommend it. It was amazing. I learned a lot. And everyone was super nice. I got to meet some astronauts, which was really cool, and talk to them. Uh, and you can contact me at, at this email, and I'd be happy questions if you have them. So no, it wouldn't complicate things. Right. <laughs> right. Well, when you're selected as an astronaut, you know there are there are mostly no health problems. But you know, astronauts after they get 14 million dollars worth of trading, if they develop diabetes, they're not going to retire them. <laughs> There's no way. So. <laughs> well, no, none of the astronauts have diabetes, but uh, that I know of. But yeah. So if they have. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's there have been astronauts with brain tumors that have had them removed and they're sent back. You know, they're sent on another mission. So yeah, after all of that training, they don't they don't want to they don't want to lose them. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, you know, um, as far as that goes, uh, <laughs> uh, I can't see an astronaut not wanting. I, uh, so let's see. Um, behavioral things. Behave like so. If a if an astronaut is pre kind of predisposed to some behavioral re reaction to the space environment and they notice, then that's put into the model. Uh, but as far as kind of their attitudes, um, they would just be ordered, you're going to use this Band-Aid. So <laughs> and, you know, they'll follow orders, I, I guess, yeah. Okay. You know, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, so at Glenn, Re so there's a bunch of, they, Aunt NASA just takes a ton of interns every year. Um, at my, my center, I believe there were about 80 students in my program for the summer. Um, but uh, no, I, I, I don't. And actually, um, what I've heard for a lot of those opportunities, when I was talking to other PIs at NASA, um, I was talking about how I kind of had just blindly applied through the website. Most of my fellow interns had 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 a connection somehow and gotten in through that way. And they said they don't really receive that many applicants through the website. So um, I'm not sure how many people I was, you know, how many people we were competing with. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but I know they don't receive as many applica applications as they would like. So definitely apply if you're interested. Oh, good question. Yeah, so that's a great question. No, um, not only people in, you know, the physical sciences or engineering, they're looking for um, finance, they're looking for education, business, they're looking for all majors. Uh, so good question, yeah, they're looking for everybody. <laughs>